Hello everyone, myself Shweta Shah. I am your instructor for the subject Computer Organization and Architecture. In this subject, we have started unit 2 that is Basic Computer Organization and Design. And in this, we are going to see today the topic that is Timing and Control. So, let me start with the topic Timing and Control. In this topic, we are going to see how you are providing the timing signal and control to your basic computer system that we are going to design in this unit. Here, this is the block diagram for your timing and control signal generation. Uh, it is consisting of the two decoders, that is 3 cross 8 decoder and 4 cross 8 16 decoder. We have used two decoder, one sequence generator, that is over here. This is the sequence generator, 4 bit sequence generator that can generate from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. And then we have used the control logic gate for providing some control okay so this is our basic circuit that we can use for this time and control generation uh, here uh, the instructions read from the memory are placed in the instruction register that is ir register that is shown over here and the control unit uh, the uh, in the control unit in the control unit the ir instruction is divided into three part first part is the ith bit uh, 12th, 13th and 14th bit that are the operation code and rest of the 12 bit 0 to 11 bit that are for your address. Okay. Uh, the operation code in this bit 12 to 14 are decoded by using the 3 cross 8 decoder and the bit 15th of I that is I is transferred to the flip flop designated by the symbol I. Here I, this is your fifth, 15th bit and this 3 bits are decoded by this 3 to 8 decoder and depending upon the value over here if it is 0 0 0 then first signal will be generated if it is 0 1 0 then your second signal is generated if it is 0 1 1 then your sixth signal is generated and so on so depending upon the input value any of your one control signal is going to be generated from this decoder 3 to 8 okay this is uh, your in instructions of code decoding okay second thing next we will uh, use this eight output of this decoder are designated by the symbol d0 to d7 so this is d0 d1 d2 d3 and up to d7 and so on. these are provided to this control unit okay and this uh, bit 0 to 11 are applied to the control logic gate to provide your address okay uh, the 4 bit sequence counter can count from 0 to 50 okay because it can count up to 0 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 1 okay and depending upon that then you can generate total 16 output lines this because the sequence counters input we are output we are going to uh, we are going to give here over 4 cross 16 decoder okay so here if it is 0 0 0 0 then t0 signal will be generated if it is 0 1 0 0 then t1 signal if it is 1 1 0 0 then t2 signal and t3 signal and so on so your any of one timing signal is generated over here here d0 d1 d2 depends and represents your control signal and your t1 d2 d3 T15 represents your timing signal. So you can generate T0 to T15 timing signals. Next, uh, the sequence counter SC can increment it or clear synchronously. And most of the time, counter is incremented to provide the sequence of timing out of 4 cross 16 decoder. And once in while, this counter is cleared to 0, causing this next instruction timing signal to start from 0. So you can uh, clear the sequence counter also. And when you clear it, that means you have started new instruction. For example, let me consider the case where the sequence counter is incremented to provide the timing signal T0, T1, T2, T3 and T5 in signal sequence. And after the T4 signal, that is next signal will be T5. But at the time of T4, the sequence counter is cleared to 0 if the decoder output T3 is activated. And this expression can be represented like this, T3, D3, T4, that is your D3 uh, control signal is generated and T4 timing signal is generated then at that time you have to clear the sequence counter by Z. That means you can start next instruction. Okay. So uh, this is our circuit diagram that how we can generate this timing and control signal. Next we will see how, how this timing signals are represented. 
The time diagram uh, shown in figure, it shows the time relationship of the control signal. The sequence counter SC responds to the positive transition of a clock. Initially, the clear input of the uh, sequence counter is activated. That means your sequence will start from 0. So here you have T0, T1, T2, T3, T4 and D3 and sequence counter SC. Okay. Here you can see that when T3 signal is D3 signal is generated and T, D3 is already generated and when your T4 timing signal is generated then your condition that is D3 T4 is fulfilled. Both of the things are one. So at that time your clear signal is generated for your sequence counter. That means your sequence counter is clear. Okay. So uh, for at first clock. You have timing signal T0, at second clock you have timing signal T1, at third clock you have timing signal T2, third, for your fourth clock you have timing signal T3 and so on. This can go up to T50, but if you have used some condition like T4, D3 or you have used T5, D3 and so on, any condition can be there. And depending upon that, that, this condition you can clear your sequence counter. So that this uh, this represents that your instructions execution is completed over here, and you can start the next instruction. Here further we can see that the first positive transition of a clock clears sequence counter to zero, which in turn activates the timing signal T0 out of the decoder, and T2 T0 is active during the one clock cycle. The positive clock transition enabled T0 in the diagram will trigger only those resistors whose control inputs are connected to the timing signal T0. Okay. Similarly, for T1, T2, T3 uh, uh, signals, that means you can access or you can activate only those resistors whose timing signals are connected with this condition. That is timing signal T0, T2. You can say that this T0 and D0, D1, D2 and T0, T1, D2, T3 are some condition and by combining this condition you are activating some parts. Okay. Uh, the sequence counter is incremented with every positive clock transition unless this clear input is activated. So you have T0, T1, T2, T3 in sequence. Up to when you got the clear input and that clear for clear input you have used some condition. So here the uh, this procedure sequence of timing signal from T0, T1, T2, T3, T4 up to T4 it is going on. If the SC is not clear then it will continue with T5, T6, T7 up to T50 and then it will go to T0. Okay. So maximum you can provide this 16 timing signal that is T0 to T50. And here the last three waveform shows uh, how SC is cleared when D3 T4 is 1 that we have already discussed. The output of D3 from the operation decoder becomes activated at the end of the timing signal T0. Here the last three waveform shows how SC is cleared when the D3 T4 is 1. The output of D3 from the operation decoder becomes activated at the end of the timing signal T2. When the timing signal T4 becomes activated, the output of the end gate is that implemented in the control function, the D3 T4 becomes activated. At, uh, and this signal is applied to clear input of the SC. On the next positive clock transition, the counter is clear to Z. So by this way, we can use this timing and control signal. And this causes this timing uh, signal T0 to become activated instead of T5. And that would have been activated if SC were incremented instead of clear. Okay. So by this way, we can uh, use this timing signals for your system. So we are ending our today's session over here. If you have any query, then you can contact me.